Oh wow, that is something else. Holy cow, what in the world? Over the years and years of doing this silly fly fishing thing, Researching and scouting new waters has become one of my absolute favorite activities. I think it's the unknown that makes it so fun. Every corner is fresh on the eyes, and each bend whispers the empty promise of that one big fish. But there is always inherent risk when stepping into the unknown. Researching maps and books are important, this is true, but they can only get you so far. That looks doable. <laughs> Once your boots touch down, you are at the mercy of whatever Mother Nature throws at you. This is one of those nights where scouting new water went terribly wrong and Murphy's Law reigned supreme. Everything that could have gone wrong, did. I found some fish which was nice, but I feel extremely lucky I made it out with no serious injuries. Shrouded by the normalcy of yet another post-work evening session here in Idaho, I excitedly made my way to the newest access point, blissfully unaware of the night I was about to have. And with the false confidence of snake gators and the endless potential of the unknown, I shot out of the empty parking lot with a little more pep in my step. The late afternoon sun was sitting heavy on my back, but the heat radiating off the rim could not slow me down. Now, I was more than well aware that as I meandered along the outskirts of the canyon, I was entering the heart of rattlesnake country. And it may be silly to some of you out there to be wearing snake gaiters because statistically, human and snake interactions are overwhelmingly positive. And as a somewhat rational man, I can agree with that. But personally, I want to have every single advantage in my favor as soon as I step off that trail because Statistics are nothing more than some silly mortal's opinion when Murphy's Law and Mother Nature have the final say. Plus, it wasn't more than a few days ago, I had a close call with a thick old nope rope right by the river. So why even take the chances, you know? I'm making sure to keep a quick eye on my Onyx because to my left is BLM land and to my right is private farm ground. It's pretty clear where the difference is, but I just want to be sure that I'm within my rights walking here because, yeah, the canyon is just down there and we're going to try and uh, harken back to the old Rio Grande vids, do some, uh, do some canyon sprawling. So, yeah, let's keep a good pace. It's hot as hell, but that water's going to feel nice. A lone Arkansas eagle buzzed around and the canyon deer did the dash as I straddled the line between these two very different worlds. It's wild to think that just a stone's throw away from this unsuspecting ag land is truly a wild canyon seldom seen by the waiting angler, or the public for that matter. Huh. Okay. That looks doable. <laughs> so as the slope of the canyon became slightly less aggressive, my prior map research held up. This was by no means a stroll through the parking lot, but I was more than capable of zigzagging my way down to the big bend with relative ease. And when I say relative ease, I mean I only fell on my butt a few times. But the feeling of strawberries and sore tailbones seemed to float away on the canyon breeze when I made it to the final overlook of this unique river section. Oh wow. That is something else. Holy cow, what in the world? From my perch, I could see quite a few big fish in the run directly below me. This was a great sign, but this is where my research failed me for the first time on the day. Getting down to the river was extremely steep and next to near impossible to access. Satellite images made it look like it had a bank, but in person, I was dealing with a sheer drop straight down to the water. All right, time check is 5.45. It gives us a few hours to fish, but uh, yeah, I think we're gonna have to reclimb that canyon. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to my extraction point. It didn't take many casts to realize that this run, it just wasn't gonna work out. The current was a touch swift and a tad deep. And I mean, I'm just one guy. My double haul can only go so far, but no worries at this point. This is scouting, baby. The night was still young and it only took a short up and over to make it to the next potential plan B. Well, that's kind of a mistake. Whew. Whew. Oh, hallelujah. 
All right, we're going to make this work. Getting to semi-weightable water was certainly a relief, but in the time that it had taken to get down to the river, I could feel the wind shift. Suddenly, the sweltering sun I left at the top of the rim was covered by a threatening clump of clouds brought on by a cold mountain gust. This was the kind of wind shift you could feel in your spine, folks. And still holding on to a powerful skunk and my path upstream blocked yet again, I had to double back for a second time. This wasn't going well. This took considerable effort and more than a bit of rock climbing to make happen, but over the horizon, this straightaway looked full of structure and finally a weightable bank. It's so funny how a hard skunk can distort your perspective of distance and make a massive vertical drop look like just another little walk around the block. Oh my gosh. Finally some flat water, good God. Too much to ask for there. Well, at least we didn't get skunked. See ya, buddy. Woo! Yeah! Yeah, there we go. That's a beautiful cutty right there. We'd love to see it. Alrighty, that beautiful cutty is back, and I'm gonna apologize for three things. First, the wind, second, the water, and third, this same old ramble. You guys who've been here a while, I am so sorry. You're probably tired of me, you know, doing this whole dog and pony show. But for those of you who are new, I caught that fish on the dry dropper. But not just any dry dropper, that was on the adjustable dry dropper. You see that sliding? This is an adjustable dry dropper rig that I've got, you know. I would say kind of figured out at this point where I can, you know, cast, adjust for depth, catch with nymphs, and then at the same time, just like that, catch with the dry. Get the video, ooh, right here. Go check it out. I've got a link down below, as always. It's, uh, it's a nifty rig, good for the West, good for the Midwest. I crush pretty much fish on this anytime it's warm. So it's, it's a killer rig, man. So yeah, deep breaths, deep breaths, turn around. Day's turning around. <laughs> At least we just didn't get skunked. Well, there's our first nymph muncher of the night. Not bad. Now, will you hold the phone? Hold the boat. Oh, no, you won't. See you. In this brief fishing session, the threatening clouds had blown over, and I was graced with the golden glow of a Teton evening. It felt like my luck had finally shifted. My watch still read pretty early, but the rim of the canyon stole quite a bit of sunlight. And at the time, the fish were biting, so my mind wasn't paying attention to the orientation of the sun. Oh my gosh. That's a good fish. Yes, yes, yes! Now that is what we're looking for tonight, baby. Yes, let's go! Ah, oh, the grind is, whew, the grind is real, but it's so worth it. Oh, there it goes. Dang it, all right, well, you got a little look at him, but that was our best fish of the night, man. Ah. It's so awesome, they're eating the big bugs. I finally rounded the corner and lost two big things. First and foremost, what little sun was left in the sky was now forgotten behind the canyon walls. Secondly, I lost all the good structure where the fish seemed to be holding. I managed to pick off one last rainbow in a deep pool, but at this point, I don't know if it was worth it. My fervor for fish had distorted my sense of time and I was now an hour late on a reasonable extraction from this canyon. Let this next sequence of events be a lesson to any and all watching. My lust for fish and the hope of salvaging a sideways adventure got me in very real and serious trouble. I mean it. 
I literally found myself between a rock and a hard place. Too far from the access point I had been counting on and seemingly too far away from the point where I had hiked in earlier that afternoon. Mix that with the sun setting fast, I was in trouble. Due to poor planning in the beginning and middle of my trip, I made terrible decisions to end my outing in the hopes of cutting corners and salvaging precious time. Doing a vertical climb out of any canyon is dangerous. That should go without saying. And I now know trying to scramble out of the Teton Canyon is the most dangerous. At doing it all in bulky wading boots and an awkward pack, this was next to near suicide. Between loose rocks, dead ends, and near fatal slips, Adrenaline was redlined for too long, and overall body output was more than maxed out. For the better part of an hour plus, I battled this vertical death trap. If it wasn't free soloing up and over sheer rock faces, I was bear crawling on loose dirt at impossible angles. And you might be wondering yourself, hey, dumbass, why in the world would you put yourself in this mess? Trust me, I get it, but hear me out and you might have a bit of understanding and learn from my mistakes. Because believe me, I never had any intention of putting myself in this situation. This unfortunately was just the accumulation of research not adding up and making somewhat rushed decisions in the moment. Like I'd mentioned earlier in the video, the rim of this canyon is crawling with rattlesnakes. During the sweltering summer, these thick little bastards become crepuscular with their activity. This means they tend to be more active at dusk and at dawn. So at the riverbank, I figured it'd be best to avoid hiking along the rim at dusk. So instead of taking the longer and relatively safer route, I tried to take a shortcut. And when I lived in New Mexico, I had made more than a few daring scrambles out of the Rio Grande Gorge. And if my memory serves me right, that place is no joke. So this is where the confidence of previous experiences can be a dangerous tool in your toolbox. The margins between success and failure are very thin when cliff dwelling sagebrush is the only thing keeping you safe from free falls and jagged rocks. And again, yes ladies and gentlemen, this was all due to my lust for fish. This was irresponsible, dangerous, and downright dumb. My GoPro ended up cutting out for some of the scarier parts of this climb and I suppose that will make this horrible memory a lot easier to suppress over time and oh, I should mention. Because the vertical climb took me considerably longer than forecasted, I still ended up hiking through Rattlesnake Alley, but this time in the pitch black. So my poor decision put me smack dab in the middle of a lose-lose situation. And I laugh looking back because it just seems like insult to injury, but I feel extremely lucky I didn't step directly on this snake. Seriously, the margins were razor thin, and it makes no sense to me why I wasn't walking but two feet to the right. <sighs> but I suppose the devil is truly in the details, folks. So, was this whole adventure worth it? I mean, I have to say yes, because I'm alive and I'm here to tell you about it. And will this ever happen again? Unfortunately, again, yes. When you put yourself in these situations, it's just a part of the game. But each of these bad experiences get banked in my mind and help to influence future adventures in order to make better decisions when scouting new locations. So hopefully next time when it rains, it just doesn't pour. Well, howdy folks. If you're seeing this, then that means the video is over and we've made it out of the canyon alive. Didn't get bit by a rattlesnake. Holy cow, what an adventure and thank you as always for coming along with me and yeah, enjoying these trips, these outings, whatever you want to call them. I, I don't know, it's so cool that you guys dig these videos. Maybe you learn something and maybe you just like watching but it really does mean a lot to me and the more you guys like and comment and you know subscribe, do the whole sharing thing, it goes into this weird YouTube algorithm and I guess it makes this channel grow. I don't know and I can't say I care much about it. But what I do care about is you know, hearing what you guys have to say about these sort of adventures. I really do like listening to comments and kind of going over and yeah, having a conversation with you guys. So if you don't wanna do that, come join us over on Instagram, come join us over on the Discord especially. It's always a hoot and a holler, having a good time. But folks, wherever you find yourself, be it in a pretty sweet canyon here in the great state of Idaho or in your backyard, I sure hope you keep those feet in the water. And until next time, tight lines.